when Moses went up and he saw that bush burnt and he noticed that the bush wasn't consumed, but it was burning. What Moses saw was the power of the word, because what was God speaking? What words? His. When you meditate on the word of God, the word becomes a burning fire within you. I'm going to read that in Jeremiah. It becomes a burning fire within you. When that fire is burning within you, regardless of what you do or what happens, it can't be put out. What happens? Your position has changed. Reverend Porter Wednesday, she taught on governmental positions. And it's funny is because she always asks me, do I have something to say? Sometimes I'm saying a lot by just shutting up. Well, governmental position only comes by the word of God. When God wants something changed in your life, it's going to come through his word. When it comes through his word, that means he is doing a governmental shift. Good God Almighty. When that governmental shift comes, it alerts the adversary. When the adversary is alerted, then he wants to do everything to try to pull you away from what the governmental position that you are in. For an example. If God calls you to move to Pennsylvania, that's a governmental shift. Why? You're not moving based on your ability. You're moving based on what the Lord is telling you to do. It's a governmental positioning shift. The enemy is upset because he don't want you to make that shift. If you make the shift, he is afraid of what you're going to do once the shift is made. That means his territory is going to be threatened. Good God, are y'all listening to what I'm saying to you? Well, when his territory is threatened, he's going to do everything in his power to try to bring up monkey ventures in the works. He's going to tell people that you can't do it. Your credit ain't good enough. You don't have enough money. Or it's too expensive. Or it's this. Or it's that. Or it's this. Now, I'm going to tell you something. All you got to do is take the word of fire on it and burn up all of that noise. You put the word of God on it, which is a consuming fire, which is Jesus. Wasn't the, didn't the word say that the word became flesh? Didn't the word become flesh? Aren't we trying to be just like Jesus? If we're trying to be just like Jesus, that means the word controls our flesh. God Almighty. When the word controls our flesh, regardless of what circumstances come up, we can speak the fire of God on it and it consume it. We no longer are subject to the authority that trying to stop us from moving in the governmental position that we have. Where we make a mistake is we look and analyze our circumstances. Good God Almighty, good God Almighty. When we look and analyze our circumstances, we are dependent on our own ability. And somebody in here listening to me today, when we're dependent on our own ability, what happens is we have taken God out of the equation. When you're taking God out of the equation, you are no longer, you have just given your authoritative rights away. I say, I feel the Holy Ghost now, boy. I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost. The question is, the question is, why are we where we are? Why are we carrying burdens that we have no authority to carry? Why are we doing the things that we know not to do, but yet we do them because we know not to do them, but yet we do them anyhow? So now, here it is, we're doing things, and we're expecting God to turn around and to help us, and we're totally out of his will and out of his word. But we have a Bible. Turn to Colossians 3, 16. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the, see that? To the Lord. When you Allow the word of God to dwell in you. Certain things will start manifesting in you. You notice the first thing it said was wisdom. So that means whatever the situation that develops, first thing the word of God is going to do is give you wisdom on the thing that you need to do in order to handle it. But see, wisdom don't come until the word of God dwells what? 
in you. No word, no wisdom. Now, listen, it says teaching and admonishing one another. So that means when the word of God is in you, when wisdom come, that means when you start applying the wisdom, you will be teaching someone. That means it's not based on you, but it's based on someone else that needs you to go come through. In other words, when you take the word of God, God will put you in situations that he can show himself strong. So not only it will prove something to you, but it can reach someone else who needs you. You aren't here because you want to be here. You're here because of divine appointment and you have a purpose. A purpose, a purpose. You have a purpose. The purpose isn't about you. It's about someone else that God is raising you up to minister to. And it says, and teaching and admonishing one another. So when the word of God is in you, you will not become hypocritical. Your foundation will be love. The words will come out of your mouth will be such as... Mm, as fire from the Holy Ghost. Listen, because what's happening is that you are penetrating someone else's heart that needs to hear what God has to say. When that happens, and I want y'all to hear me on this, when that happens, the other person won't feel threatened. They will start acknowledging, acknowledging you as someone who cares and loves them. When that happens, joy start coming. When joy comes, we start singing in psalms and hymns. We start giving praise to God because we know that God is in the midst. When God is in the midst, you know it's going to work out, baby. So when they are caught up, when you reach your hand and love to them in wisdom, being led by God because the word of God is in you. See, none of this can manifest until the word of God becomes you and you become it. We are seeking for things or trying to get after things when actually, in all actuality, the things will come to you. Sometimes doors are open for you just because. What you are seeing is the magnificent power and the favor of God on you. When doors are closed... That nobody seemed to open. But you get there and the door opens wide. People were wondering, what are you doing? It's not what you are doing, it's what you are carrying. You are carrying the word of God, which brings forth the amazing grace, which is God's amazing favor on you. Say it out your mouth that I am a carrier of amazing favor. That's right. Give God some give God give God some praise. So now, the purpose of what I'm doing today is to make you aware of your distractions. When you become aware of your distraction and you start allowing the Word of God to be your final authority, good God Almighty, it doesn't matter what hell raises up, you're able to overcome it because it's not coming against you, it's coming against the Word. When it comes against the word, eh, nothing. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Was Jesus the word? Good God Almighty. Well, when it becomes the word, everything that has been coming against you has to bow. People can act stupid if they want. They're going to hit a brick wall that they wish they never hit. So they need to be careful about what they say and what they're doing up to you. Especially if the word is richly in you. You can, people, you cannot neglect this. You cannot neglect this. You cannot be sidewinded. Sometimes we get off track a little bit, but the word of God will pull us back in. It, it will reel us in like a, it will reel us in and say, okay, all right, because I'm telling you, me, me and Reverend witness this all the time. Sometimes when we get off track, and it's like I just see the Lord folding his hands and say, okay, let me give them a minute. 
They having, they having, they going through a fit of carnality right now. Let me just let them deal with themselves for a minute. Eventually, they will, they will, they will pull it together. Next thing you know, I get into prayer. Then bam, either Reverend come up with some revelation, or I come up with some revelation. One or the other will come up with something. Then we turn to look at each other, and both of us want to say stupid. We both want to say stupid because we already had the word of God right there. We already had the ability. We already had the power, but we focusing on other things. Stupid. You know, we've gone through all these changes unnecessarily. Are you tired? Are you fed up? And I'm doing God's commercial out here right now. At you. Are you tired? Are you fed up? Have you had enough? Are you tired of being tired? Are you tired of being worried? Everything up until this point that has been going on here at New Life Christian Center Ministries, we have been, um, this is it, the word, is bringing you in a place where you understand your positioning in life. That's a, that's a leader, one who understands his position, one that can control his environment and change his environment, you see? Well, none of that can be done until the word of God is applied correctly so it can be done. All this hooping and hollering, <laughs> all this other crazy mess. The word of God needs to be taught. The word of God needs to be preached. And it needs to be revealed to you the mysteries of the word. See, but in order for you to be able to receive the mysteries, you got to put yourself in a position to receive it. How? You got to pray in the spirit. That's one. Two, you got to read the word. Three, you got to talk to God outside of it. Before you get into the word, you got to talk to God. God, help me. Show me what you need me to see. Talk to him. Tell him, lead me, guide me. Show me what I need to see. You know what I'm going through. You know what I'm dealing with. And you're the only one who has the answer. Show me what I got to do. I'm yours. I'm sitting here. Jesus, I ain't going to move until you tell me what I got to do. So that means... When distractions rise up, that means you have to take them distractions and put them exactly, I receive. You have to put those distractions exactly where they need to be, under your feet. So if someone start acting stupid, I ain't got time for it. Things start happening, I, you know, that ain't supposed, I, I ain't got time for it. Look, I, I got to say this in love. A lot of issues come from grown folk. Their issues trying to marry you. Oh, you don't understand. I'm not trying to. Only one thing I need to understand is that I need to sit at Jesus' feet. Oh, you don't love me. I love you more than you think because I ain't laying you out because you're being stupid. Excuse me. I cannot marry your problem. I got enough that comes to me on a day-to-day -day basis to be worrying about your problem. So we have to say enough is enough. Are you tired? You frustrated? What have you to, what have you picked up? What what are you doing to allow this? Is your money short? And see, let me say this. Famous words of Pastor P. I ain't speaking from the mountaintop. There is some things that I had to get myself in check with. And let me share this. Me and Reverend been going back into the course of heaven. We've been dealing with some things. And boy, Reverend pulled my card. She sure did. She pulled my card. And the thing about it, she has a way of seeing things. And sometimes, you know, you can take it the wrong way if you're in the flesh. I, I was, I was in the, I was, I was in the flesh. And I took it wrong. I was in the flesh. What you getting upset for? I'm in the flesh. And I wanted to have a fit of cardinality while I was in the flesh. She said to me, Pastor, how can you expect your people to do certain things when you're not following up yourself? I put my, I said, okay. After going down the road about 50 miles, I said, and the Holy Ghost came around and said, uh-huh, I had to pull out your car, didn't I? I said, yeah, Lord, you did. See, because, and I'm going to tell you about these scriptures that we're supposed to be turning in, right? I do it, but I don't do it every day like I should. How can I expect for y'all to do something when I'm not doing it every day? But yet I am praying, but yet I am, you know, uh, 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 meditating in the Word, but I'm not, I'm not doing, uh, 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 going through my scriptures like I should every day, like I'm supposed to. I'm telling on myself, I don't care. I'm just bringing it out. You know, I'm bringing it out. You know, I'm bringing it out. See, because the devil sometimes wants you to hide things. You need to bring that monkey out. 
You need to tell him. You need to show him. All right. Okay. You got me, but you don't keep me. You know? Mm -hmm. So now, after going through that fit of canality and going through all those changes that I was going through with Reverend, and you know what she says to me? She says, I love you, baby. I said, oh, ho, ho. now you're going to put the salt in the wound. <laughs> So now, not only did I get whipped up on, not only did my feelings get hurt, not only did I go through things, but I realized one thing.